post match chat with chaps for that Millwall podcast where it finished in Wales. Cardiff City won, Millwall nil. Another game goes by without a win. Um, I think that's now one win in 10. That was uh, Edwards' fifth game in charge, three losses within those five games. Um, and unfortunately for us, we're now just two points off the relegation zone. And I've said openly for some time, if you think we're not in a relegation battle, um, you do need your head tested. And, and today was, uh, I'm recording this on the Saturday night, um, was another example of why we are absolutely going to be in the thick of it, unfortunately, at the wrong end of the table this season. Um, for what it's worth, just to start off with, I actually think we play all right today. I honestly do, and I'll talk about why I felt that. But bottom line is, we got no points, and other teams are, and that is a real concern, particularly with the next game being away at Leicester City in the week. So, look, let's start with the the team that Edwards picked to to to, to start the game. Um, now, obviously, it's worth mentioning that two very senior players that I would imagine would have been in the starting eleven did. Uh, miss out through suspension, which was George Savile and Jake Cooper after picking up bookings against Sunderland. Um, so the lineup, there were four changes. So the first change that is probably the most noticeable one was um, Matty Sarkic coming in for Bart Bielkowski. Look, before the game, I um, I, wrote, I felt sorry for Bart. I'm a massive Bart fan, um, just as a person, to be honest, but also I felt his form has justified keeping a place in the side. I think inevitably there was always going to come a time where he would step out purely because you don't pay £1.2 million for a goalkeeper at Millwall and not play him. But um didn't necessarily think it would be today. But Edwards made that call. The back four was uh, one one change there. So obviously Cooper comes out, Hutch comes back in, captains aside in his 250th game. Obviously he played against Ipswich and then came straight back out of the side but coming back in for the Cardiff game. So back four, Ryan Leonard, uh, Sean Hutchison, Wes Harding, who moves to the left side of centre-back, and then Murray Wallace. Midfield, um, another couple of changes. So one in full. So Alan Campbell comes into the starting lineup in place of George Savile. It's a partner, Billy Mitchell. And then the wingers, or wide midfielders, we're going to call them, Brooke Norton Cuffey on the right-hand side. And then Ryan Longman coming in for George Honeyman. And then Kevin Nisbet, Zim Fleming up top. Um, so that was the 11. I think, again, looking at the bench, obviously, Maku SA, very young, but, you know, obviously, we know the raw potential they have. But uh, Malachi and Grant, both on the bench again, it just shows you how, uh, you know, paper thin this squad is at the moment. Um, but, look, I think for the first 30 minutes, nothing happened. So there is absolutely nothing for me to talk about, in all honesty. Um it was a real nothing game. There was, I, I I do think in the whole context of the game, the conditions played a part. I wasn't there. So I can't say for sure if the conditions were as bad as it appeared on telly, but there were so many misplaced passes from both sides. No one can string passes together. Um, it, it, it was a real sort of non-event for the first 30 minutes. It had nil-nil written all over it. I then felt for the last sort of 5-10, we started to take the upper hand. And I think we had a really good chance from from Nisbet. So some really good work. I think um, I think Nisbet uh, lays it off. It finds its way to I believe it was Brook Norton Cuffey. I haven't seen anything back, so this is just based on memory. Uh, who fires a, a really good ball into the box, um, and Nisbet gets a toe poke on it. He does everything right, but unfortunately for him, it it was straight at the goalkeeper. And to be honest, that was the only chance I can remember in the first half. I felt that. What we needed to do in the second half was be a little bit braver. I wanted Nisbet, who I felt was showing for the ball, but I wanted him to actually be able to hold the ball because I felt nothing would stick to his feet. I felt he was uh, a little bit all over the place in terms of trying to control the ball and, and bring others into play, but he was showing for the ball, as was Fleming. I felt the work rate was better than it has been, particularly from those front two. And I felt mildly optimistic going into the second half. Um However, I did think that Cardiff could not be as bad as they were. At the end of the day, I think Cardiff have been in the top 10 all season, so they can't be a bad side. Probably jumping ahead of myself, but I honestly think Cardiff, I don't think they're better than us. I really don't. I think they're one of the sort of worst teams I've seen this season. 
based on one game, one showing. Um, but ultimately, we've let them have three points. So what does that say about us? Anyway, jumping ahead. So they make a couple of subs at half time. Um, so I think they hooked off um, uh, Ugbo, who was largely ineffective in the first half, uh, and Callum Robinson. And they brought on um, Colwell and Yaku Mate. And Mate has always been a fall in our side whenever, whenever we played uh, against him, most noticeably against Reading. And he um, he did make a big difference for them in the second half. He um, His strength and also his pace and movement was definitely causing problems for for the back line, uh, in particular Murray Wallace, when he sort of peeled out to the right-hand side. But I felt up until about 60 minutes, we were dominating that game, literally dominating that. that, that you know, And I felt that we had a couple of good chances. So the first one was, you know, Norton Cuffey had a great run down the right-hand side, uh, whips a, a great ball into the box that's, you know, just just cleared. Uh, it's on 50 minutes. It goes out for a corner. Um, and we had a, quite a lot of pressure. Then we had a, a corner and Fleming has a free header, which uh, he, he should have done better with. Then we have uh, Nisbet's free kick that um, is a whisker away. You know, between sort of that half time and sort of 60 minutes, we had a number of opportunities uh, and sort of near chances that we just couldn't convert. Um, and then I felt the game started to swing a little bit and become quite open on around 65 minutes where they have their first kind of real chance of the game where um, Sarkic does well to claim, I think it's a free kick or a corner, and he sort of throws it out to Murray Wallace. And to be honest, it's, I, I blame both of them because he's throwing it to Murray Wallace, you know, knowing it'll be under pressure, but Murray Wallace kind of waits for the ball. They then break and Sarkic makes a half-decent save. Um then they make a, a sub, as do we, around the 70-minute mark. So what I found quite interesting as well was Nisbet and Fleming both went off after 70 minutes. From memory, they both went off after around 60 minutes, or Nisbet did at least, against Sunderland. So to me, that tells me that, again, I might be reading too much into it, that the, their fitness is improving. Um, they are working harder, in my opinion, the front two, but it's still not there. And Edwards don't think they can sustain it for 90 minutes. Otherwise, I see no reason to take them off. So he takes off both those front two, and then he brings on uh, Watmore and Bradshaw. They bring on Keon Etete, who, with his first touch, to be honest, he should open the scoring. That's probably Cardiff's, just even uh, including their goal, their best chance of the game. Uh, where he, he blazes over from close range. And then, as I say, the game becomes end-to-end -end on around 70 minutes. And then they get their goal from a corner. Um, Ryan Leonard didn't seem to think it was a corner. Haven't seen it back. Um, they win the first uh, connection in the box. And I'm sorry, but Sarkis has to save that. Um, it, was, it was really poor. Really, really poor. I don't really know what he's doing. I don't like to blame goalkeepers, but in my opinion... And this is the thing about fine margins in football. You know, we've got a point from the last two games. To me, it easily could have been four, at least. The Sunderland game, the penalty should never have stood. In this game against Cardiff, how are we not walking away with at least a draw from that? I don't know. And it's very, very easy to sit here and go, you know, and these players are technically limited. There's no denying it, right? You know, the past completion rate, of our players, particularly our back four, needs to be better. But it was in the 70s today. Factually, it was in the 70s. So it wasn't as bad as it looks on, on, on first viewing. But yes, we are trying to play a style of football that maybe these players aren't up to. But if I'm honest, I do think the last two performances have been better. And we did give it a real go at the end. You know, Watmore had a couple of good opportunities. Some nice link-up play with Bradshaw. But Imaku has a couple of opportunities. He puts a really good ball across the face of goal that no one's there for. He then has a he hits the side netting. We do have chances in that game. We did create more chances. We had more possession. We had a, an XG of 1.7 uh, versus their 0.6. You know, so it, we had more big chances, more passes, more interceptions, a better pass completion rate, fewer long balls than they did. We, at the end of the day, every single stat from our side was positive and better than theirs, other than the fact that they scored the goal. But that's football. That's fine margins. I'm not sitting here complaining. All I'm saying is, on the surface of the results, it's very easy to say that things aren't improving. I think they are. 
I just think they need to improve quicker than they are because if they don't, well, the, the bottom three is looming. Um, and we could well be in it come this time next week, which is concerning. I still think we'll have enough about us. Um, and I think the business we do in January will say a lot. But make no mistake about it, things have got to improve because if they don't, we uh, we will find ourselves in the bottom three and find it very hard to get out of if we don't. Sheffield Wednesday starting to win games now as well. By the way, I think the Stoke game is going to be massive because their form's just as bad as ours. So look, you know, um, this one's going to be shorter um, because I'm doing it on the Saturday night. Um, and unfortunately, I'm not going to be around for the next few games uh, due to work commitments. So I'm not going to be able to even watch the game. So therefore, there won't be any post-match chat with chaps for the next few games. But I just wanted to come on and, and, and quickly to sort of give my overall view. And I think my overall sentiment would be, yes, we lost the game. Yes, things need to improve results-wise. But I think performance-wise and all the stats back that up, that we are improving. Um and if you're a Cardiff fan listening to this, I'd love to hear your view because I always try to remain impartial. If I'm a Cardiff fan watching today, it was dross from their perspective and I do not know how they won the game, in all honesty. Um, but that's football. That's football. Um, not always the right team wins the game and not always the, the results go the way they should. And we've got no one to blame other than ourselves, because we've taken too long to get the basics right. I do feel as though the players worked hard today. I, I, you know, as I say, I, I don't think they necessarily can sustain it for long enough, which is a problem. But that is getting better. The fitness is getting better. We are trying to pass the ball a lot more. Um, but on it's not enough. In terms of players to mention, so I think the most noticeable players I'd like to give a call out to uh, would probably be, uh, there'd be three players. So it'd be the, the, the same two as Sunderland, so Brook Norton Cuffey. I felt in the second half, after about 65 minutes, we just didn't use him enough effectively. We needed to get him in the game more because every time we did, their left-back Collins was shit scared. Um, but I thought he was really good when he had the ball. I thought Brian Leonard was very, very good again. Excellent. I think he is, uh, he, he's well, if he stays fit, he's, he's player of the season. I think I've said that on numerous occasions. And then I think given the context of how many, how little minutes that he's had, it's, this probably could apply to Alan Campbell as well, to be fair. I don't think he had a terrible game. But I think Sean Hutchinson uh, was was pretty solid um, considering um, the amount of minutes he's, he's he's had in recent weeks. I thought he was he was pretty solid as well. But I would probably give man a match between probably Ryan Leonard again, to be honest. Um, so yeah, look, that's it. I, I'm going to I'm going to leave it there. This one is a short one. Um but um, results need to improve and they need to improve quickly. Um, and unfortunately for us, I'm not quite sure they're going to improve in the week when we go to Leicester after they beat, I think, Plymouth 4-0 or 4-1 today. But let's see. Listen, thank you so much for listening. Really do appreciate it as always. Uh, hope you're able to enjoy your weekend despite that beautiful uh, that beautiful result. Um, but look, um, things are getting better performance-wise. We need to keep the faith. I can see what Edwards is trying to do. Um, I believe in it. I think the players do. I think the effort's definitely there now. Um, but we need a little bit more. And I think we need a little bit of help in January. Those We do those things. I think we'll be okay. But make no mistake about it, we are in a relegation battle. Thanks for listening. Bye for now.